I get it. But let's go to the Cowboys real quick. I think this is a freestyle video. You know, I, I wrote nothing. I'm just going to give y'all a couple of stats, which mean absolutely nothing. Now that the Cowboys got blown out. But, you know, even in the blow, a lot of, a lot, a lot of people tell me, Yo, Al, you know, it wasn't all Dak Prescott's fault. Which I don't seem to realize, it is his fault. He's the leader of the Cowboys. So whatever happens to the team, the leader gets checked. The head coach gets checked. Are there other participants that didn't show up? Yeah, the defense didn't show up. And I'm not going by 41 for 60, 400 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, 387 yards. No, 403 yards total. My bad. I was with the sacks. So he clipped 400 yards, three touchdowns, 41 completions. That's a great game. Individual stats, that's a great game for anybody in the NFL. But to me, it's still a horrible game, and I'm going to explain why. When you're the leader of our team, you have to set the tone. He didn't set the tone yesterday. He threw two picks yesterday early in the game. And not to mention all those bounce passes that already fucked any chance that we had are competing because the defense immediately gave up two two scores. Then he threw the two picks. One was a pick six by Savage. When you're the leader, you gotta set the tone. Follow the leader. When he wasn't doing his part and the defense wasn't doing their part, we had absolutely no chance to win. You feel me? Jordan Love went 16 for 21. 272 yards but he had three touchdowns no picks Dak nearly threw for twice as more yardage same touchdowns almost three times more completions right but Jordan Love had the perfect game he didn't have to do all that extra shit and his team won and they blew them out so this is why I say numbers are always exaggerated when Mayweather says numbers never lie I never believed that. I, I, he lucky I couldn't check him on that because I could prove that numbers are very deceiving. This is another situation where the numbers are deceiving. If you didn't watch this game and you look at both numbers, you'd be like, damn, this would have been a close game. Okay, Dak threw two picks, but look at all the you know, completions and yardage and shit like that. Same amount of touchdowns. You would swear that this game was close, won by a close either way, right? But numbers are deceiving. Cowboys got blown out. And his numbers basically are better than Jordan Love's numbers beside the two picks. You dig what I'm saying? So the more of the story is, yes, it's Dak Prescott's fault. And I'm going to even take it deeper than that. I'm going to take it to Jerry Jones because I've been told niggas that Prescott is not a Super Bowl quarterback. And this year I was quiet because it looked like, you know what? Maybe homie turned the corner. It's possible that Dak Prescott turned the corner. So I gave it a fair shot. You know, I even fell for it. I thought we were going to win yesterday. I didn't know about covering that seven, but I had them on a few tickets money line. And you seen the same old movie. Now, a lot of y'all be like, Al, you mad? And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. I'm disappointed at them. Oh, yes. But I expected this. Y'all that watch me consistently know that one of the reasons why I got closer to the Raiders is because I'm tired of this shit here. But like my man said, out, you can't, you know, 30 years of liking a team, you just can't vote. So I get it. That's why I got, you know, I got my, my main bitch, the Cowboy, then I got my side chick, the Raiders. And both of them, one had a great year, you know, fucked up in the playoff, and the other one came on strong. So hopefully next year the Raiders will turn it up. But it's going to be a long time before one of them two teams win it all. I get it. But when you ride with shit, you got to ride with them. I'm not a bandwagon cat. You understand me? You see when I've announced the Raiders shit, two, you, two losing records and two losing seasons in a row. So that's not bandwagon. Bandwagon is if a nigga fuck with Kansas City in the last couple of years, knowing they've been averaging 14, 15 wins a year. But back to Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. A horrible performance. I'm hoping major changes. My man asked me, yo, Al, what are you going to talk about as far as, you know, the changes? 
McCarthy's got to go. I've been said that uh, Aaron Rodgers made McCarthy and Green Bay. Got to go. Uh, if I had to choose who, I'm hearing Belichick. I don't think he's going to sign Dan Quinn to be the uh, the coach. I think Quinn might go to Seattle. I'm hearing Seattle. I'm hearing uh, not Atlanta again, but I'm hearing Seattle, maybe Carolina for Dan Quinn. Or, uh, you know, we're not going to get hardball. There's no way we could get hardball. So it's going to have to be Belichick. I mean, I'm trying to think of who else is out there. We probably got to get like a young coordinator, maybe. But me knowing Jerry Jones, he's uh, 81 years old. He's going to want to bring Bill Belichick for maybe two, three years, as long as he's going to stay the owner in that booth at uh, AT&T Stadium. Because I know the Joneses, the young, the sons are going to take over. But Jerry going to do about two, three more years. Jerry won another ring before he retires, you know, and sails off for the off, uh, uh, sunset. And the only way that can happen or, or will happen if they pick up somebody of Bill Belichick, somebody of that magnitude, Jim Harbaugh. But Harbaugh's not going to be available. I keep saying, I mean, I know Dak is one of the greatest regular season quarterbacks, but you got to make change. You got to trade Dak. Trade him to the Jets for a package. Or, you know, a team that could really utilize him. There's a lot of teams. Like, like the Atlanta Falcons would be dope with Dak Prescott. I think he could light it up in Atlanta. It's not going to work for him in Dallas. He needs a change of scenery. It's already in his head that we all know that he's the black Tony Romo. It's already in his head already. We, he knows that. He needs a change of scenery. Maybe he gets some luck somewhere else. But we got to trade Dak while he got high value. Get like maybe two number ones for him, a number two, and a now player. We got to search for another quarterback. Who's going to be that quarterback? I have no idea. I don't think uh, them young boys are ready. I know Rush ain't ready. I know Lance ain't ready. But we got we to gotta go another direction. We have to go another direction. Dak Prescott cannot win the big games for us. Those are facts. I don't give a fuck about the numbers. I keep telling y'all that. Numbers is just numbers. I care about closure. I care about winning it all. I care about closing. That's why I got Jordan over LeBron. I'm the type of dude, all that other shit don't matter if you can't close shit out. You feel me? If you can't close shit out, all that other shit don't matter. Fuck you, Stephen A. Smith. You a bandwagon using these Dallas haters fans to your shit. You think I can't see through you? Once again, I see through you. Just like you bring that baseball guy on your on your show so you can learn off of him, Russo. I see through all your shit, dog. That's what I'm saying. I can't wait to get at you because I'm going to expose you, my nigga. And with that, y'all hold your head out, your sports man. I love y'all. And like I said, my team is not going to win a chip with Dak Prescott. I'm going to say it again. 100.